Hello everyone, thank you for joining on my another live stream today. So, happy Saturday. I hope you're having a great Saturday today. It's the 8th of August 2020 on Saturday. So, yeah, actually, originally the title said that the, uh, you know, I wanted to talk about the um, uh, one win and nine losses, which is a part of the psychology um, strategy. But um, because I had some family issue, uh, I wasn't able to prepare for the talk uh, that deep. So I decided to do the market analysis instead of talking about this uh, psychological topic today. So sorry about the change. Um, I was actually on the meeting with my family. Uh, yeah, until like one minute before, one minute before the live start. So yeah, sorry I wasn't able to prepare for the talk. So yeah, let's do some market analysis today, and I will uh, do uh, the review on this weekly forex forecast tomorrow. But at the same time, um, you know, I will check some charts and forex pairs today. So welcome everyone. Thank you for joining. All right. So AJ, um, Bedang, WM, Melanie, Godly, and Jack, and Sunday. Uh, Dinesh, Ashok, thank you for joining everyone. Good to see you. Good to see you. All right. So, yeah, let's uh, check out some markets. Um, on Friday, it was quite uh, quiet. I mean, uh, I didn't see much movement last Friday. I mean, yesterday. So, I didn't really take any trades. Yeah. But uh, let's see. So, here is a Euro USD. Right, and this is the daily chart. Hold on, I put the daily chart here. So let's do some review of this uh, Ichimoku Kinko Hyo here. So when you look at the market like this way, uh, so first of all, what will what will be your Ichimoku analysis? Hold on, let me get the uh, a drawing tool and also the ring so that you can see where. The mouse is, and also let me pop up this uh, chat so that I will I can see that real time. All right, there we go. So, all right. Good morning, everyone from beautiful sunny morning from uh, Preston, UK. Great, great, great to hear that. All right, good to see you. Good to see you. All right. All right. Um, Re uh, Regira, uh and Vincent Anthony Victor. And uh, thank you for joining. All right. GPP AUD started uh, trending up. All right. All right. Yeah. But in a bigger sp scope, I think that is still in the range. I, I believe. Hold on. Yesterday. So that's when I look at the currency strength chart. So yeah, I can see that uh, this is the data of uh, from last uh, I mean yesterday on Friday, and I can see that the UST was quite strong on Friday, and New Zealand was quite weak, as far as I see this one. So GBP AUD, if I look at it from this um, currency strength, GBP is a green one. And AUD is the blue one, so GBP is higher in strength than AUD. So I can see that um, you know it was bullish in the beginning, and later on the GBP gets weaker and AUD gets stronger. So towards the end of the day, I think that the uh, the market was going down. So that's something that I can read from this um, from this uh, currency strength chart. Yeah, this tool is so useful, and it's open to anyone. So um, uh, yeah, and also the link is on the below the description, so you can click on that and find the the strengths of each currency. But it's it's quite uh, useful, you know. All right, all right. All right, theory. Good to see Euro USD. Maybe the end of the big bump. 
Oh, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Euro USD. This is this was going up, but now uh, we can see some uh, resistance here. And Kijun Sen became flat now. Technically, Kijun Sen is flat now. So I can see that uh, this is consolidating, ranging now. Yeah. So, and also, let's take a look at the bigger time frame. For example, weekly chart. Um, yeah, broke, or well, technically not really breaking this uh, recent high. But to me, this looks to be resisted by this uh, line on this uh, 1.1847 area. And it might retrace backwards. Yeah, it might retrace backwards this way. Yeah, so we'll see. Um, until we see a decent up and down trend in the market, basically, we better stay away. Is my view. Yeah. Made a smart profit. That's great to hear. Great to hear. Yeah, make sure that you follow your own strategy. And you should be fine. So, hold on. Yeah, also, before starting here, right, before moving on, any further, just a disclaimer, all this knowledge is based, basically based on my own experience. So when you take trades, please do uh, with your risk. So anyways, yeah, it's going up, but now it's kind of uh, resisted and it might go down from there. All right. We're gonna view this chart on daily basis. So, you mean uh, this um, currency strings chart? Yeah, this is actually not really in the time frame, but this is real time movement from uh, 6 a.m. in Japan time until uh, 5 55 a.m. in Japan time. So, you can actually check charts in any time frames, but you can see the currency st uh, strings chart on that day. So, we have an option today and yesterday. So, right now the market is closed. So, this one is actually data from uh, Friday. And if you click on the yesterday, this will be the uh, you know, last Thursday, two days back. Alright, agreed about uh, GBP AUD. Alright. Jack Smith, uh, what settings do you use in a Fibonacci retracement and a Fibonacci expansion? Uh, extension. Um, I use the default. I use the default Fibonacci retracement. And as for the extension, um, I have a video about that. But if you want to know it, and if you're new to my channel, I use uh, these uh, numbers. So 138.2 is a target one, and 161.8 uh, is the second target. So if the market goes in wave, goes upwards this way, then I expect the price reaches all the way to this higher level. So once it breaks upwards here, clearly, then uh, it can go all the way up here. And that will be an expectation. And also there will be a recent high here also on this uh, Euro USD. So if it goes in wave to the bullish side, then yeah, I think these are the potential target based on the uh, weekly chart yeah. Yeah, Fibonacci retracement and extension is so uh, useful for me. And actually, these are uh, very uh, uh, one of my favorite uh, tools to use to capture these uh, retracement points and a target by these uh, extension levels. Alright, hello Mr. Finantis, thank you for joining, to see you. Yep. Alright, I see can, uh, we can make watch list of uh, 40 pairs most volatile to practice more the strategy and uh, reduce the risk to 1%. Um, I don't recommend you to look at these uh, 40 pairs or 30 pairs. I recommend you to stick to up to 5 pairs. And these pairs should be the ones that are familiar with you. So I used to take trades on the USD JPY only because I'm, I'm born in Japan and I'm based in uh, Tokyo, Japan right now. And I used to live in the US and that's why initially I was only looking at that pair. And once I get used to it, then I move on to different pairs. So yeah, 
I recommend you to uh, stick to up to five pairs. Yeah, ideally three pairs to five would be just enough if you can catch the trends. And if not, then you just stay away from the market. Yeah, that will be yeah recommended based on my experience. Seems currency strength chart very useful at a glance. Sure, sure. So this is this is like a ichimoku currency strength chart, right? <laughs> you can uh, you can uh, at a glance identify the level of this uh, each individual currency strings. But make sure that you know this moves uh, quickly, and you know it can it can change any time. So if you watch the market right now, and it, let's say this is moving. And you might think that, oh, USD, the orange USD is quite strong. So you can expect that USD will be going up, but uh, it can go down anytime in the future. So, yeah, so um, I, don't th I don't really take this one, take this uh, currency exchange chart to take trace, but um, to, to, to refer to what's actually m uh, moving the market, I use this uh, currency exchange chart. So for example, let's say USDJPY is going up and I look at this currency chart and I know that uh, USD is stronger than JPY and that's why as a pair it goes up. Yeah, I, I look at it uh, this way. And yeah, so uh, for example, uh, when I look at the, um, let's say like a Euro JPY, then Euro is below JPY. So in here, I can see that the uh, JPY is more strong than the Euro in this date. So um, yeah, I can expect the Euro JPY as a pair will be going down. Yeah, but it doesn't mean that I take trades with this currency strength chart because it can change anytime. So just be careful on that. All right. All right. So yeah, um, uh, sorry everyone. Uh, actually today I was gonna talk about some uh, psychological uh, mindset, but, but uh, because of some fa family issue, I had to speak with my family uh, in the last minute, until the last minute before the, this live starts. So I wasn't able to prepare enough for that talk and that's why I decided to do the market analysis instead of talking that uh, psychological mentality. Yeah, I was going to talk about one win and not nine losses as a part of the psychology and based on my experience, but I will talk about it uh, maybe on the next session. Yeah, so let's move on to the next one. Um, yeah, Euro GBP is a uh, daily chart is yeah it's a uh, triangle p wave so the highs are getting lower and the lows are getting higher so it's squeezing triangle so i expect the price to go up to uh, this uh, descending trend line and when it touches then i expect a reverse downwards and whichever the price breaks out i just follow it and this is the basic theory of this um, a triangle, uh, triangle range uh, breakout strategy. So yeah, um, that's still what I'm waiting for on this uh, Euro GBP. And I think um, uh, it might happen uh, sometime next week. So I'm just expecting that on this one. All right. And a big bump means we can uh, take short uh, call. Yeah, if there's a weak point in upwards, that can be a strong resistance. So, yeah, it might reverse, reverse from there. Yeah, it might be. All right, Chandra, USD bullishness continue next week. All right, be happy. Thank you for joining from Greece. All right, and Sekid, thank you for joining from uh, New York. 
Good to see you. Weekend. Great, great. All right. Hi, Karin. Thank you for joining. Good to see you. And Prashant, nice to see you again. Thank you for joining as well. Does the vo volume strategy work? Um, I don't use the volume so much because I only take trades in Forex. So I don't I really look at the volumes in Forex. All right. Yeah, I guess today I will just um, you know greet with each body, everyone, and um, yeah, just do this uh, live a little bit slow, slower than you know uh, any other days. Yeah. All right. Hi, Pra uh, Pra Lad. Thank you for joining. Good to see you. And uh, let's see, Danish, you're welcome. And Kayon, good to see you. Prog, good day, good day. <laughs> All right. All right, uh, Baxi, does the currency strength chart always accumulated momentum dur uh, during the day, like your example one? E example does. Yeah, yeah, it moves like that every day. The currency strength chart moves like this every day. So as you watch the market, it actually, you know, it, go, it goes in progress. So in the real time, you can see the uh, strengths of each individual currency. Yeah, this is so nice. I mean, I, I, I've been using this uh, uh, strength chart for the last uh, couple of years and it's been working great. And actually this one, has been uh, created by one of the uh, Japanese traders in Japan individually. So, and there is an indicator for this, and I think it was MT4 um, that is available also. So, when you can Google it, Google it maybe you can find it out. But um, I think, uh, you know, this is just enough, right? Uh, if you put it on the MT4, maybe it might become more heavier. So, and I prefer the platform to be lighter, so I don't really want to use that one. But anyways, right, this one is a very nice tool, and this has been my partner uh, for the last uh, couple of years now. Hi, Kayon. Thank you for joining. Good to see you. All right. And uh, all Ichimoku friends, please click Nice Weekend. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Please click like. Nice weekend. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah, so it's a Saturday, right? I just want to ask you what you're doing right now on Saturday. Any plans today or uh, tomorrow? Yeah, actually, um, on next Monday, Japan is on holiday. So we have uh, three days off. Uh, in the business hour. So usually Mondays, right, uh, we have less volatile market. So I'm sure that Asian market will be much quieter than usual because we have a holiday in a Monday. But because the COVID-19 is sp still spreading uh, in Tokyo and outside of, uh, outside of Tokyo, uh, people really don't really want to go out right now. So I guess um, that's that's the uh, typical, you know, like um, city life. I mean, uh, where people living here, packed with packed with the people, you know, it's kind of difficult to move around. Right? We better stay inside the house. So I don't think uh, people will travel around over this uh, three days off. But you know, hopefully, it can uh, it can be improved or it can be settled down anytime soon throughout the world and yeah I'm hoping every day yeah I want to travel you know I want to travel around I want to visit Dubai again and uh, yeah I want to move to Dubai and I want to visit different places different countries because I have uh, now I have a trader friends and I have uh, you know lots of uh, supporters in the world so I want to you know actually go there meet them and uh, you know talk about trades or anything face to face and 
that's becoming my dream now <laughs> you know so yeah I hope uh, I really hope that you know the situation will settle down anytime soon anyways it seems to be a USD versus the rest oh yeah on that day yep USD was quite strong on that single day on Friday so hopefully um, yeah we'll see what's gonna happen next next week I mean All right, so let's see. All right, what else uh, do we have here? Please explain New Zealand USD. All right, why not? Why not? We can just so have, some, have some free talk. So yeah, once again, you know, I was gonna talk about some psychological uh, talk uh, today about the uh, you know one win and nine losses as a part of the psychology. But um, I decided to do this, um, you know, live analysis because um, I didn't prepare enough time to uh, to prepare for the talk because there was an emergency in my family, and I was talking to them for for like three hours right on the phone uh, before the last minute uh, of the of this live starts. So sorry, the topic is changed now. Usually on every Saturdays I talk about some psychology money management but today it's like a free talk so all right let's take a look at the um, um hold on what was it uh, nzd hold on nzd usd yeah nzd usd and i will ask you a question right i won't talk initially so i will just wait for your answer on this market and i will make some comments all right, so here is a New Zealand USD. Oh, and I think uh, I've created this uh, forecast line before. And after the forecast line breakout, it goes upwards now. But anyways, um, hold on. Yeah, sorry. I'm still trying to get used to this uh, TradingView platform. <laughs> I used to use the uh, MT5 for my analysis because I wanted to show you some positions, but now you know, trading view is much, much better. Looks more beautiful, and I can do more stuff, things here. And that's why I started use this one. So, anyways, um, so here is a New Zealand USD daily chart. And what do you see here? All right. Any comments will be welcome here. If you can focus on Ichimoku can go here five lines, you can focus on the price action. You can focus on, you know, anything about the market. So yeah just um you know i i just encourage you to you know um put your uh, answers on the chat box right now so that the uh you know we can learn together so once again this is NDD usd and what is your thought on this one oh by the way there will be a ichimoku membership live after this public live so the live will be for the next uh, 15 to 20 minutes afterwards. So hold on. Let me come back to some of the comments now. That's a really great tool. Sure, sure. The currency string chart is a great tool. Yeah, it's one of my favorite tools to use. All right, Jigadish. Good to see you. And Jobart. Good to see you also. All right. Yeah, these currency strings chart. You know, the currencies on the strings chart is default, and I cannot add anything more. With COVID uh, roaming uh, invisible, no uh, parties here in the Philippines yet. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. No parties. Right. I mean, yeah, yeah, kind of try to get together, you know. I was gonna eat ramen a couple of days ago, and I, I uh, uploaded the video on the second channel, but because the insiders packed the people, I decided not to go in to eat ramen. 
although ramen is my favorite food, you know, I decided not to go in because, you know, just too many people in line. It was a lunchtime, and this is the business district. So, yeah, usually in the lunchtime, there are lots of people outside. So, no parties, no, like, a restaurant where, where there are lots of people. Yeah, kind of uh, staying away right now. So, let's see. All right, bye, bye, bye. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Your, I can see, aggressive comment here, bye. All right, New Zealand seems to be weakest out of AUD and Euro. All right. Okay, bye. All right. Please make video about scalping with Ichimoku. Um, I don't really scalp with Ichimoku, so I don't think I can create a video because I don't do that, unfortunately. Uptrend, it's a buy. Uptrend. All right. It's not a buy trader. A uh, buy trade right now. All right. So uh, in, let me uh, yeah let me know your reason of uh, why you think it's a buy or why you think it's not a buy right now. Yeah, please uh, please put the reasons also. Yeah, Mr. Finantis, you're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, things happen, right? Things happen in life, and I think uh, you know it's it's for anyone, right? Yeah. So sometimes personal things happen. Sometimes family issues happen, but we have to move on, right? We have to move on. So. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah, this is this is uh, this is something that I really enjoy to do. Yeah, so that's why I keep doing this. All right, overall uptrend going by cloud angle. All right, that's a good reason. Yeah, yeah, that's a good reason. Yeah, price is above the kumo, and also kumo itself is moving up. So this is um, bullish. Yeah. Uptrend with support at Kijunsen. Yeah, that's, that's a good point too. And I can see that there was a another support. Uh, technically, it didn't really touch on this Kijunsen. But I regard this as a support because there's a weak point in downwards. And it's, uh, it's going upwards from here. So I value this as an important low. And I can see that the price was supported by the Kijunsen previously. And right now, the close price is here. Close price is slightly below the Kijun Sen right now. But uh, hope uh, if uh, if we see some bullish uh, bullish candle next day, then it can turn to be continuous bullish. So yeah, support the Kijun Sen is another great point to make. The price near Kijun Sen no buy in this time frame. All right. Broke above monthly wage pattern, but lack of momentum compared to other uh, risk assets. Okay, okay. So, all right. Indeed, the USD is still going up. Yep, this is continuous uptrend to me also. But we want to find a reason, right? We want to find a reason of why you think this is uptrend. Weekly chart shows gravestone doji. I also have the op opinion opinion on the USD will gain strength for a short time this month. Okay, so weekly chart. Let's take a look at it. And oh yeah, there is a like um like a doji here, and it's going retracement now, retracing. So yeah, we'll see if this is going to be a Resistance or not, we'll see next week. All right, I think that, I think that's a good point. And let's see uptrend. Okay, candlestick is down. Okay, candlesticks down. Hold on. Oh, candlestick is a bearish. Yeah, bearish candlestick right now. So I can see that. Uh, yeah, uh, on the Friday it was bearish trend. I mean bearish uh, in the short term. Yep. You're right, you're right. What else? What else? Let me see. Um, okay, so yeah, sorry. The, I mean, the letter is so small, right? <laughs> so sometimes, you know, it's kind of very hard for me to read through. So 
you know, my my eyes go, my eyes are going like this and try to read correctly. Sometimes I make mistakes by reading it, but you know, please forgive me. Um, all right, so okay, so where is it right now? Okay, price near Kijun Sen broke above monthly wage. Yeah, I already read that. And weekly chart looks like it's look okay. So Milan looks like uh, it is being uh, registered at the zero point uh, six seven area. Yeah, yeah. There are some uh, there is some uh, resistance here, so the price may go down from there. Yeah. So to be safer, uh, we want to wait for the breakout. Right, we want to wait for breakout, and after the next pushback, we look for the buy chance. Yeah, that's a theory. That's a theory. If it really happens next week. All right. Uh, Kyo, Mr. K, please explain how to draw um, carrots wave pattern. Um, I'm not really sure about carrots wave pattern. I stick to uh, Ichimoku wave analysis. So, yeah. Speaking of Ichimoku wave analysis. Um, I connect these dots, the highs and lows, and I just connect these dots. And it goes like this, and I can see that this is N wave now. This is bullish N wave, so in this case, I expect the price to go up further this way. Alright, hold on. Maybe next week, USD will gain strength though. All right, all right. We'll see. Uptrend candlestick is down. Oh, I think I already read that. Uh, need stochastics on the lower time frame. Yeah, to confirm the buying edges. Yep, yeah, yeah. Do you play? At, uh, do you pay attention to stochastics on the daily chart? No, I don't. I don't. I only use stochastics in five or fifteen, because stochastic is there to capture the edges, right? to to uh, to capture overall market analysis right i only use ichimoku to grab the whole picture and ichimoku is really good at it and that's why i use ichimoku that way on the daily chart or you know any other uh, higher time frames okay so let's see AUD USD and euro usd are better buys okay all right All right. Oh, I see a super chat uh, from uh, Hapa Japa. Thank you for uh, your super chat. Stay gold. All right. And oh, he says, um, yeah, Kei san, when you trade, when you trade, apart from Ichimoku, do you also look at uh, Kairiritsu? Oh, uh, estrangement. I know that BNF looks at that lot. Yeah, BNF used to used to look at the estrangement how far the price goes away from a certain uh, moving average was uh, BNF's initial strategy right when he was a contrarian trader later he became a trend follower and once he became it um, you know he, he didn't take any contrarian trades anymore but um, yeah I mean I look at the estrangement uh, by taking each mock lines so um, for example, in this bullish trend, uh, I see the Kijun Sen, right? And uh, Kijun Sen is actually a very important, um, important line. Whenever you see the estrangement, so so that means when the price go away from Kijun Sen, it comes back to Kijun Sen. When it goes away, it should come back to Kijun Sen. So now it's coming back to Kijun Sen, right? So once I see that, then I expect the price to go go away from Kijun Sen towards upside and as a result it becomes a support here and it can go upwards all the way from there and that would be the expectation and also when it's in a range I also look at the estrangement too like um, if I pick up this um, market right here I take the Kijun Sen the green one Kijun Sen and if it goes away from Kijun Sen then it will come back to Kijun Sen, as you can see. Once the price gets away from the Kijun Sen, it should come back to Kijun Sen uh, in the future. 
So in this way, I use the Kijun Sen to uh, to when it's a range and when it when it's on a trend. Yeah, yeah. How far the price gets away from it, uh, you know, these lines are very important. Especially Kijun Sen, it can uh, be valuable to capture this um, estrangement. All right. Okay, Senko span A, Senko span B up, Kijun Sen up, and Kumo thick enough. Oh, so this uh, trend analysis here. Coming back to the current market, yeah, everything is up. Kumo up, right? Um, Senko span B up, A up, and Kijun Sen up. So yeah, this is the def definition of uptrend based on my own strategy, KTS. And let's see, what else we have? Uh, Cloud also looking like it is getting thinner. Price also looks getting rejected at a 0.67 area. Yeah, yeah. Kumo is too thick, right? Kumo is too thick here. What I mean by thin is like this part. But right now this is thick enough, so that so that means that this is stable uptrend. Right? Stable uptrend. Okay. And what I mean by stable uptrend is there is a decent pushbacks. Decent pushbacks. So for the market, for the price to go up, it, sh it needs to charge energy, right? Or, um, you know, maybe charging energy is not really appropriate word, but, you know, you get the idea, right? Uh, whenever you jump, you need to, you know, uh, sink a little bit, right? And then jump all the way, like this. So um, that's the image of this, uh, you know, stable uptrend, downtrend, because when it jumps too much, then it will retrace backwards. And when it jumps too much, that's what Kumo thinness, Kumo thickness is gets very thin here. So, in other words, when you see when you find this Kumo to be very thin, then we expect I expect the price will be retracing anytime soon, and that's why I say it's dangerous to place a buy on these places. But it can retrace anytime soon, right? It could have been retraced from here or retrace from here. Whenever you see Kumo is very thin like this. But once you have the thickness of the Kumo, then uh, that means there is a decent pushbacks. Decent pushbacks so that, you know, this is more stable uptrend for me. And that's why I say Kumo thickness is very important. Yeah, I hope you got the idea on this one. It's very important. Alright. And I do see some comments now. And I continue to see more comments, but um, yeah, unfortunately, I have to go um, before switching to the membership live in about twenty minutes. I have to uh, make uh, you know a phone call, so um, I will be ending the live in about uh, you know two or three minutes. Um, but yeah, once again, I just wanted to say thank you, everyone, for joining on my live YouTube lives and make some comments like this, right? Um, I really appreciate your support, and I wish you learn, uh, you know, uh, the Ichimoku knowledge, and also the way they take trades also, based on my YouTube uh, video and lives, so that the, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, in one day, you can be a full-time trader, or you can be a successful trader, even if you are part-time. So tomorrow is Sunday, so I will talk about uh, Wichimoku Weekly Forex Forecast. So, and the time, the time will be at the same time. Tomorrow at 6 p.m. in Japan time, I will talk about this, I will go over these currency pairs and commodities and the indexes to, uh, to give my analysis based on the weekly chart and the daily chart. So, if you can join, that'd be great. And also, uh, like I said before, uh, there will be a Ichimoku membership live after this in about 20 minutes. So for those who are members, I hope to see you there. So yeah, everyone, once again, thank you for joining. And I hope you have a great weekend. So stay healthy and stay gold. All right. Bye for now, everyone. Thank you. Matane.